the great state of Michigan, known for its great lakes, the auto industry, and of course, for being hockey town. And again, Thomas Hunt scores! February 18th marked the annual Hockey Day in Michigan, and this was a day for everyone. Every boy and girl and adult playing a game of hockey. So if you're out here having fun, enjoying yourself, that's what Hockey Day in Michigan means. We love the way! Come with us now as we revisit the fun times of Hockey Day in Michigan 2012. Wingspan is brought to you by Warrior All Hail. Hi there everybody and welcome to Wingspan. I'm Justin White. Hockey Day in Michigan is a time to celebrate everything to do with sticks, skates and yes, pucks. In this episode, we'll relive some of the best moments from this year's celebration. How does one go about becoming Hockey Town? Well, winning helps. Michigan is home to 19 Division I college hockey championships, 11 Stanley Cups, and includes more than 2,500 amateur hockey teams. If you like hockey, you're in the right place. Hockey is one of those sports that just pulls you in. Once you're a fan, you're hooked for life. Take Joanne Lukasik, for example. When the 55-year-old isn't playing goalie, she's coaching not one, but two teams. And as I found out, the only thing greater than Joanne's passion for the game is the obstacle she had to overcome to keep playing it. As she does every Monday night, Joanne Lukasik is heading to the rink. Joanne plays for a team called the Stingrays in the Michigan Senior Women's Hockey League. Like so many others who play, Joanne lives for the game. For me to step out on the ice, when I have my goalie equipment on, I'm comfortable. Everything seems like it's in balance. But unlike many others, Joanne has a couple extra pieces of equipment. When she was 16 years old, Joanne lost both her legs in a farming accident at her family's home in southern Ontario. It was several days after, and I remember uh, my mom coming to the, on my bedside, and and, uh, and it was and I had been going in and out at that point, and uh, I was fairly lucid at that time. And and I says, "Oh, by the way, can you call the coach and tell him I'm not going to make the next game?" And she looked at me and she says, "Well." She says, she says, well, why are you saying that? She says, and I looked at her and I says, I don't have any legs. And she says, oh, so you know. And I says, yeah, I know. I know. I knew right away. Joanne may have missed that next game, but less than a year after the accident, she was back on the ice with a pair of wooden prosthetic legs. The first few times I went out, I was just basically skating along the boards and more or less using the boards as a prop to keep me up at times. Not long after that, Joanne was back to stopping shots. She can't move around as quickly as some other goalies, but she's found a way to overcome that, too. Anyone that's played against me, like they'll say, man, you're, you've got a fast glove hand. And well, I use that glove hand, and I've learned to improve the skill with the glove hand because a lot of times it's saved my bacon where, no, I can't make the kick save, but I can dive and grab it with the glove, and you're not getting it. Watching her play, it's hard to even tell Joanne has a handicap. Her teammates on the Sting Race quickly learned it's best not to underestimate her. I remember the first time we were going to skate against her as a goalie, and we heard that she had prosthetic legs. I thought, walk. But not so easy, because she's pretty damn good. Half the time, we don't tell the other teams in tournaments, and then they find out after the game, and they're just as shocked. Like the time Joanne was playing in a tournament in Las Vegas, and one of her prosthetic legs got twisted around as she was diving to make a save. I had to go up to the ref and say, hey, you know, the, our, our goalie's leg fell off. Can you give us some time? And, and uh, you know, they were like, you know, are you kidding me? And no, really. So they went over and helped her out and everything like that. So, and she's laughing about it in the locker. She thinks it's funny. 
Almost 40 years after an accident that changed her life, Joanne Lukasik is living life to the fullest. Gotta get lucky sooner or later. And for Joanne, life doesn't get much better than playing the game she loves. Coming up on Wingspan, hockey is where the heart is. But what happens when you combine the two? Stay tuned to find out. Welcome back to Wingspan. In this episode, we are celebrating Hockey Day in Michigan. The annual event honors our state's great hockey tradition. There was no better time to try out hockey than on Hockey Day. Hockey Day in Michigan! Novi Ice Arena got involved in the day's events with a Try Hockey for Free clinic. Young kids were able to take the ice and test drive the sport for the first time. There were definitely a few tumbles at this event, but overall, Fun was had by all the kids who attended. But Novi wasn't the only place to get your hockey jones. Lindell Ice Arena in Royal Oak also hosted a clinic for kids to commemorate Hockey Day in Michigan. They also had a packed schedule of games for kids of all ages to play, play, and play some more. We are here at Suburban Ice Arena, a place where many kids practice their hockey skills. But the game isn't just for youngsters. Around the state, hundreds of adults learn to play hockey every year. So it's never too late to improve your skills on the ice. And as Shannon Hogan found out, it's also a place where you just might find love. It's 6 a.m. on a Thursday morning. And while other people are just waking up and grabbing a cup of coffee, Laura Vogel and Mike Ellis are out on the ice. They're joining their hockey friends, they do this at least once a week, to learn more about the game they both love, trying to improve each time they skate. Well, the Breakfast Club is um, it's an opportunity if you're an adult to go through an, an hour and a half of practice and they put you through competitive drills. It really helps me be a lot better than I otherwise would be. I would really stink, I think. I'm awesome now. I'm a legend in my own mind. And while both Mike and Laura have been skating at Suburban Hockey for close to a decade, they only met about a year and a half ago. Laura was yak, yak, yakking in line, and I figured she must like me. She just talks to me in line so much I can't even concentrate on the drills. So um, Coach asked us, to, this was the last practice, and Coach asked us to take two laps. And I skated up to her, and I said, uh, would you like to have a cup of coffee? And she looked at me very disappointed and said, absolutely not. I didn't say absolutely not. They can joke about it now, but Laura's rejection was like a slap shot to the gut. I was disappointed, and three months later, I get... Oh, you weren't just disappointed. What did you do? I broke a hockey stick <laughs> in the locker room, and then three months later, I, I get an email from Laura, and I didn't know it was Laura, and they said, what, what day are you going to be skating? And I said, who wants to know? And it was Laura. And a whirlwind hockey romance was born. And when the next session at the breakfast club began, their friends couldn't help but poke fun at the new couple. All of a sudden, they realized I was dating her and seeing her, and of course, there's kidding around and all that, and, uh, but it was worth it. For this couple, their love for each other was only further enhanced by their love for the sport. You know, it just seemed to be one more reason that we got along so well. I mean, we enjoyed the same things, and I don't know, it seemed like we were kind of meant for each other. And dozens of laps, shots, and drills later, Mike and Laura decided it was time to cross the blue line and tie the knot. What better place to get married than where they met, right here on the ice? Their coach, Lyle Fair, will conduct the ceremony this summer. Not everybody's going to get married at a breakfast club. <laughs> Hopefully this is the first and last. <laughs> We thought we'd just keep it light, and Lyle's been a good friend to us, and since he's coached us for all these years, we decided, you know, why can't Lyle from Suburban marry us? Uh, he's qualified, he can coach us, why can't he marry us? A couple that skates together. Sticks together. <laughs> so to speak. Hockey is love. You gotta take the puck with me. There goes the honeymoon. <laughs> Coming up on Wingspan, we take the game outdoors. How would you like to have a hockey rink in your backyard?
Welcome back to Wingspan. In this episode, we're bringing you the best from this year's Hockey Day in Michigan celebration. On Hockey Day, Fox Sports Detroit brought you two prime college hockey matchups. The Wolverines kicked things off by hosting the Wildcats of Northern Michigan. Then we headed west to East Lansing, where the Spartans hosted the Nanooks of Alaska. Let's take a look now at the best of Saturday's college hockey action. We've made our way to CCHA headquarters here in Farmington Hills, where hockey greats line the halls. Next year, Michigan State will add a speedy young forward from Plymouth to its roster named Michael Ferentino. Michael honed his skills on the backyard rink his father built. It's a rink which is nothing short of spectacular, as our Trevor Thompson found out. Nestled in the midst of a quiet piece of property in Plymouth sits one of the more fabulous outdoor rinks you'll ever come across complete with boards, glass, lights, and its own refrigeration system. Oh yeah, this rink's got it all. Oh. We used to have a pond up front. We skated on for years, and it seems like the kids would get a week, 10 days at best out of it, if they're lucky. So anyway, what we did is we put in a sport court, we put in a refrigeration system. We've got two 70-ton compressors that basically freeze the concrete underneath the ice, and then we build it up just like they would at Joe Lewis Arena. 60 by 140, it's basically just a little larger than a regular tennis court would be, and that's what it does. It doubles in the summer as a tennis court, we've got the sport court, we've got the you know, basketball hoops, things like that, so it kind of serves all purposes. The kids, uh, they love it. It's the best outdoor activity. They, I know where they're at. I know what they're doing all the time. It's wonderful. Uh, just have kids coming home from school and whatever, and we hang out for hours and play around, and it's great. <laughs> It's amazing. I love coming out here. You know, he's been one of my good buddies for a long time. I've played a lot of hockey with him, so it's great coming out here. You're playing with the environment, and uh, you just kind of get to relax and skate with your friends and stuff. It's really nice. And, of course, before and after you skate, you need a place to change. And, of course, Mike Ferentino's rink has that, too. We put the dressing room over here so basically the kids can change, and, you know, we can sit and watch them. Oftentimes the parents will sit up here and have a glass of wine and watch the kids play, and so it works out quite well. Dude, it looks like you've got like a full complement of rentals up there. I mean, what's going on? There's no excuse. Even us washed up hockey players that get here basically uh, have no reason not to strap them on and go out and skate. You can't say you don't bring your skates or you can't say you didn't bring your stick or what have you. We've got a Zamboni. It's a funny story. We bought it um, at a farm auction in Ann Arbor. And a bunch of farmers looking around couldn't figure out what to do with it. And uh, they were buying it for scrap steel. And we got it. We hooked it on the back of a tractor. And as you see, we got great ice surface. It's worked out awesome. So you've got the refrigeration system, you've got the boards, you've got the glass, you've got the lights, you've got the Zamboni, the ice is down. Now the real test is, what's it like? I'm going to put on the blades and find out. There you go. <laughs> I can tell you the ice felt great. And as always, when you've got good players on good ice, it makes for a good game. Hey, they even made the old guy look sharp. This is sweet. This really is sweet. Coming up on Wingspan, we'll meet some hockey parents who never skated or handled the stick themselves, so why pass on the game? 
Answers next. Welcome back to Wingspan, where we're reliving this year's Hockey Day in Michigan festivities. When it comes to hockey in Michigan, of course, the Red Wings are king. So the best home team in the NHL took their practice on the road for Hockey Day 2012. Mike Babcock's squad held an outdoor practice at Clark Park on Detroit's southwest side. And Mother Nature cooperated 100%. Wings fans were able to come out and watch their favorite team prepare for the next day's game against San Jose. All they had to do was donate canned goods or pre-owned hockey equipment, and the Clark Park practice paid off. The next day, the Wings bested the Sharks 3-2. to two. to make the stop. Back in Applicator, and there's a flex and stop. Yeah, the score! Henrik Zetterberg, Drew Miller, and Darren Helm all lit the lamp to extend the Wings' NHL record home winning streak to 23 games. We are here at Clark Park, one of many places where hockey has become tradition in the state of Michigan, in part because it gets passed down from generation to generation. A father takes their kids to a game at the Joe, and a new fan is born. But there are many non-hockey parents out there who have inherited their love of the game from their kids. Here's Matt Shepard with more. The sport of hockey continues to grow in the United States. In Michigan, there are over 51,000 registered players. So Hockey Day in Michigan is taken seriously. Hockey Day in Michigan means every boy and girl and adult playing a game of hockey. If you're out here having fun, enjoying yourself. Every child should, should have a chance to, to learn how to skate and be part of a hockey team and, and play. It's just a wonderful sport. Despite some of the economic struggles, the game in our state remains strong, with participation actually increasing, and a lot of the influence is credited to the success of the Red Wings. We were great hockey fans. We followed the Wings. We had a chance to go to a Stanley Cup party, and he touched the cup, and he said, I touched the cup! And, uh, you know, that we knew, we knew that he was on a path. As both of my kids were growing up, they watched the Wings, and they wanted to be like them. They wanted to play like them. They wanted to skate like them. My family's been season ticket holders for the Wings since they moved to the Joe back in you know, 1980 or 79, whatever it was, and they absolutely play a process. And I think you've seen the growth of the sport in the area and all the teams and all the travel programs that have come up and new teams being formed constantly. It's, it's, they're a huge part of it. With four recent Stanley Cups and six recent President's Trophies and the great tradition, the Red Wings are the favorite team of even the most novice hockey fan. But what you're finding more and more of these days is dads, including me, who never played the sport as kids, now encouraging their sons and daughters to play. Shep, I've seen you skate. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can have played with thousands of dollars in lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> the only Canadian that has not played hockey. It's just a great game. I wish I would have played. It came from a family of six, couldn't afford it, and uh, wanted him to take advantage of this great game. I never played the hockey before. It was my dream sport. And uh, my son, once I choose that, my son has been like a, such as a different sport to baseball, but. Uh, Hockey was the most uh, exciting sport for me and my son. I grew up playing baseball all my life, and they started, both my boys started skating when they were about three years old, and they, it just took off from there, and they loved the game. That love of the sport sometimes trickles up. The kids get involved, and the parents then get the bug to try and learn the game themselves. My son started playing my 11-year-old when he was four, and um, he loved it and had a great passion for it, so I jumped in and started out managing a team. And then I started uh, coaching. I took Learn to Skate and just jumped in because my son had the passion for it. I have three boys who played, and like many other parents, I love hockey's discipline and what it stands for. Skate up into them. There's three guys out there, two of you. Get up into the forward. And they learn responsibility. They learn effort. They learn teamwork. And they learn, you know, hanging with their, you know, hanging with all other guys and making sure you're supporting other guys as well. The way I look at it is, would I rather have him be here or would I rather have him be at home and spending money on video games and letting him sit at home? I think I'd rather have him being here and sacrifice a little bit, knowing that they're going to grow up having this as a, as a life sport and a life lesson. Thank you for joining us for this Hockey Day edition of Wingspan. We hope you enjoyed a look at some of the great festivities our state has to offer. For all of us at Fox Sports Detroit, I'm Justin White. We'll see you next time.